Welcome, dear people, to Virtual Azure Community Day, um, your virtual Azure community event, where we talk about all things Azure, um, anything that's related to modern day software development using cloud technologies. Um, we're going to have so much fun. We will be here all day long. There will be multiple tracks. So in about half an hour, there's a track starting from Denmark as well with great talks. But we're happy to have you here live from the Netherlands in our studio in Utrecht. Um, so Virtual Azure Community Day started out a few years ago. Um, I don't even, Hank, when was it? 2018? Like 20? No, COVID? Yeah, during COVID. Okay, well, we started out during COVID uh, from our uh, homes. Then it became crazier and crazier from studios and uh, whatnot. Um, and we decided after a little absence, um, that it would be time for another virtual conference. Why? Well, because we love sharing knowledge and um, uh, spreading that across the internet and um, making sure that also the recordings look really, really, really nice. And that's why we are in this beautiful studio. Um, so um, that's a very long story. Um, there's a lot of talks coming today. Please uh, feel free to interact uh, using the chat. Uh, we'll keep an eye on it. If you have any questions for our speakers, do interact, we love it. Um, if you want to tweet or um, um, toot or whatever that your social preference is, um, use the hashtag uh, VACD so we can, uh, we can uh, take a look and uh, enjoy uh, your, uh, your um, social messages. <laughs> it's hard not to say tweet or Twitter, <laughs> that sort of thing. Um, but uh, we don't care, just use VACD as hashtag. Uh, there's a code of conduct uh, which you can find on the website azureday.community in the top bar and you can find how to reach out to us if there's anything uh, happening that you think is not right or feel is not right. So um, without further ado, let's kick off the day um, because that's not me talking. Um, we have Stacy here um, and Stacy, welcome. Hi, it's, it's so cool to be back in this studio again. It's such a spectacular place to actually give a, a virtual talk. Huh? Yeah, it's nice. And, and we, well, we've actually s sat down here already for like half an hour talking <laughs> about all kinds of things. Um, and it's, it's really, it is a cozy studio. Uh, so well done to the team um, of, uh, of Lowlands.community. Uh, thank you for, uh, for hosting us here. Um, so, Stacy, how have you been? You've been busy. <laughs> I, I was supremely busy last year. I... I forgot that there's a difference between virtual talks and real life talks. So I applied to so much stuff. I was lucky enough to get selected for so much stuff. And then it was only later on that it kind of hit. I was like, oh, this means I'm going to be traveling for like three days a week, week after week after week after week. Yeah. It was awesome. I'm so pleased to have done it. It was also exhausting and I apologize to my family. Um, but yeah, no, that was, it was spectacular last year. You were everywhere. Yeah. Like, or at least it seemed that way. And I was at a lot of conferences too. And every conference I was, well, almost every conference <laughs> I was, it, it was Stacy. Um, so yeah, it's so good to, to see that and uh, um, to see you sharing all that knowledge. Uh, but that's not the only thing that you did, right? Um, no, I really, I completely forgot. I released my book last year. <laughs> How can you forget <laughs> about your book being released? I was hinting. <laughs> yes. Oh, wow. No, it's, I think that's one of the things that you kind of like put to your mind right in the book was quite a painful experience. It's, uh, it's awesome to do. I learned so much writing it, but it's also so much work on top of the talks and work and everything else. Um, but no, that got released in September last year. So beginning static web app uh, using Blazor. Yeah, um, yeah it's, I've had really nice feedback on uh, Twitter from that. Uh, there's a few people been asking questions and 
it's been a lot of fun to also help them and see where I can improve how I write things to make things more uh, easier to understand in the future. But oh yeah, that, it was it was tough, but it was definitely an experience that I would recommend to anybody to have a go at. Because how is it to to write a book about uh, technology? Um, what what makes it so difficult? Um, I think one of the things that makes it difficult is things change. So I started this book in December of 2021. I finished it in June of 2022. And Visual Studio changed, Azure changed, uh, the CLI changed, the static web app. It went general availability and there was a couple of um, things that you had to do differently. And I think in June I rewrote 20% of the book. Oh, wow. Uh, new screenshots, changing the way that things flowed, moving things around so they make more sense in the, in the new place. And when you're doing that, as I say, on top of talking, on top of writing talks, on top of work, um, I think that's kind of the big thing. It, it is a job in itself to write a book. And to be honest, speaking is a job in itself, and I have a job. Uh, so it was like having three jobs in one and you've got pressure from all of them building up and conflicting with each other. But the result is there and people but love it. the result it. is there. It, 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 I some, I've seen the feedback on Twitter sometimes and like it's so, everybody's loving it, what, what you wrote. So if you haven't uh, checked it out yet, um, please <laughs> do so. Shameless plug. Yeah, shameless plug. Beginning as your static web apps with Blazor. It's, uh, yeah, it's uh, available on Amazon, um, et cetera, et cetera, where you normally buy your book. Cool. So now about your talk. Yes. Because w w what are you going to gonna talk about uh, today? Can you explain shortly? Without it's, giving away the whole talk. <laughs> without giving away the whole talk. Well, basically, it's a little bit more about static web apps. Mm -hmm. So at a conference I did last year, forgotten which one, I was getting ready for my talk. It's about an hour before I go on stage. And somebody said the words to me, oh yeah, I mean, static web apps, they're cool, but yeah, they're just toys, really. You can't do anything with them, can you? Whereas I said, as a speaker, an hour before my talk, a little bit triggered. Um, but it also fired me up to like, right, no, let's do a talk on not how to get started, which is what my book is, which is what most of my other talks are. Let's have a look at a step you can do to bring this into a proper pipeline, into a company. Um, so we're not playing with the portal or anything like that. We're doing everything as it should be done. And prove that it's more than just a toy. It is a serious resource that we can use inside uh, of an enterprise. So that's kind of what I'm going to be doing today. It's less about the code this time and more about um, CLIs and um, workflows and pipelines and if all goes to plan, if the you know, demo gods are on my side, hopefully we can have something cool at the end of 50 minutes. Oh, that would be so, that would be so great. Um, I'm, I'm really curious, yeah, because um, a lot of people uh, just can't look beyond like, oh, this is a very cheap way yeah. uh, to host a website of my cat. And uh, like with all the services that now, the paid service that is released around it, uh, the paid tier, um, a lot of things are, have opened up, but it, it's hard to look beyond that. Yeah. Because it, it has been in the stage of like the block for my cat for a while. Yeah. Um, so I'm really happy with the talk. I was excited when you said, I have something new. <laughs> I'm like, ooh, that's good. Um, so yeah, looking forward to your, uh, to your talk. Um, people pay attention if you have questions. Um, um, well, Stacy literally wrote the book. <laughs> so. <laughs> She's gonna um, gonna tell more about it. So um, yeah, please uh, enjoy your session. Thank you. So um, thank you again for watching Virtual Azure Community Day. The chat is here to interact with us. If you wanna uh, grab a screenshot uh, and share that on Twitter or whatever your social network is, use hashtag VACD. Um, ask your questions for the speaker. Uh, we uh, love some uh, some interaction. And uh, well, Stacy literally wrote the book, so you can kind of ask her anything. No pressure, Stacy. No pressure. No pressure. Take it away. Okay. Well, hello everybody. Uh, one question: Could I have this TV back on so I can see what's being shared? Thank you. Oops. No. Everything, no, we've lost a no, second everything TV. is off. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun being the first talk. You get all of the technical gremlins out yeah. of the way. Wonder where where this one came from, but.
There we go. The screen's going on. Hopefully you should be able to... Uh, hopefully I can see it. You can all see my screen. You can see more than I can right now. There we go. It's coming back. So, um, yeah, I'm... Where are we? Get the right stuff on the screen. Like I say, it's welcome everybody. Thank you so much for joining me here for this session. Without my glasses here because I'm kind of reaching that age where I need the glass to, glasses to see people, but not to see a computer screen. We are going to go today and, like I say, have a look at taking those static web apps, getting it out of the toy stage and moving it just a little bit further. Um, very quick personal introduction before we get started. I'm Stacey Cashmore. I am Tech Explorer DevOps at OmniPlan, a financial software company based in Amsterdam in the Netherlands. Um, I've been coding since the mid-1990s, uh, which is why I need the glasses. And uh, for the last three years, I still can't believe that I get to call myself a Microsoft MVP in developer technologies. So static web apps, before I get into the other stuff, I do just want to do a very quick recap on what you get out of the box. Because even though it might not be, um, how do we say this, enterprisey, it is awesome. Um, I've got here just a little um, snippet from a pipeline which is created for you. So for those who haven't done it, Azure Static Web App, you get your GitHub, Azure um, DevOps repo, you go into the portal and you say, give me a Static Web App. And the portal will make a connection to your repo. It will create a pipeline for you. And without you having to know how this works, which is great for getting started, it will give you a CI CD pipeline. So as we can see in this repo here, every time we have a push to main or we have a pull request to main, this pipeline's gonna get kicked off. Now, what it's gonna do, it's got two jobs. The first one is the build and deploy job. It kind of makes sense what it says. It will download your repo and then it calls this Azure Static Web Apps Deploy action. This action does everything that you need it to do. You pass in your secret so that it can access your repo. You pass in your secret so it can access your static web app resource. It will look in the app location and API location for your code. It figures out what language you have written that code in, will build it, publish it, and then take that and put it up to your static web app for you, check that everything's running, and then swap it so you have near downtime deploys, all without you knowing any of this is happening. Seriously, it is amazing technology. It also, if you're doing a pull request, will actually spin you up an entirely new environment so that you can check your code in a production-like environment, check that you know, it doesn't work differently in production than it does on your machine, which never happens in software development, and um, then once you've finished your pull request, it goes and cleans up, which is what this second job does, this close pull request. <clears throat> when you close it, it goes in, it runs the action close, and it just cleans up your resources, which is good, because in a static web app, you have limited staging slots that you can use. But you do have the issue here of the fact that you have to manually create the static web app in order to get that repo. How, what happens during the deploy when you're getting started? It's superb. Everything happens for you. You need to know nothing. If you're doing this inside of an enterprise environment, maybe you do want to know just a little bit. So we want to improve that. The other issue is it has the link from the pipeline to your standard web app resource itself. And well, if I'm using infrastructure as code, how do I get that available? So what we're gonna to do today is we are going to build a pipeline. We are gonna create all of our resources. We're gonna deploy it. And hopefully if I don't talk too slowly, we're also gonna assign a custom domain to that so that we can run a pipeline and get our website live with no interaction from us unless it all goes horribly wrong occasionally. We'll see what happens here. We'll work with it. So first thing I'm going to do is open um, my repo. And 
this is currently contains my API, my client application, a couple of DLLs that I need to run it. It's going to be a to-do app. You'll see it running in a few minutes. Um, and it's got just a couple of tests, which not enough, but enough for the demonstration at least. We're going to open code. And I'm going to turn caps lock off so I'm not shouting at you and code's going to open in the wrong window, of course. And what we're going to do is create our workflow folder. Now, we're working with GitHub today. So the way that we have to do this is create a new folder called .github slash workflow. Any YAML file uh, inside of this workflow, if it's a valid workflow format, will be visible inside of GitHub and we can use it. The first workflow I'm going to add, we're going to add to today, is going to be for our infrastructure as code. So I'm going to add a new file here, and we're going to call that iac.yaml. Then we're going to give it a reasonable name to start with, and I've got some snippets here that I'm going to bring across because you probably don't want to watch me for the next 50 minutes do typo after typo. Uh, but don't worry, I'm going to explain what they do as we go along. So we're going to give a name to our pipeline so that we can easily recognize it inside of GitHub, create and set up SWA infrastructure. And I'm using a workflow dispatch trigger on this one. That means this doesn't run automatically. I only want to do this when I make a change to my infrastructure or when I create my infrastructure. I don't want it firing off all of the time. Next, we need some environment variables um, so that we can control how we're deploying what we're doing. I'm using three environment variables to name the resource group, to give a name to the static web app, and also to set the region that I want to run it in. Now, I was reading a blog post at the end of last week. There are now um, repo variables that you can use instead of just repo secrets. And when they go general availability, I will probably be losing this part of my pipeline and actually putting it on the repository itself because it means that we can more easily share things. It makes it more flexible. Uh, but right now, I'm trying to use what's in general availability, so this is still in my pipeline. Once we have the pipeline, the next thing that we need is a job that actually runs. <clears throat> now, here we're gonna, only going to have one job in this pipeline. Ensure that the SWA is created. We're going to run it on Ubuntu latest. And the first action that we need to do is check out our code. And you know what? I don't actually want submodules, so I'm going to change that to false. So this gives us access to the code that we want to use. Second thing that we're going to be doing is logging into Azure. And we need to do that, obviously, so that we can create the resources that we want to create. Now, you see I'm using secrets.azure credentials here. Um, I am using repository secrets for most of my settings that I need in my SWA and also my logging details so that the pipeline can access my uh, Azure resources. Next up, the actual creation of the static web app itself. So here I'm going to be using the Azure CLI and I'm just going to be running an inline script. And number one, I want to create the resource group. Now, this command is uh, idempotent, so if you run it multiple times, it's not going to crash on you, it's not going to cause things to go boom. Um, so it just means that we know that we have a resource group that we can deploy to um, in the right region with the name that we want, and we're going to use that in the next step. And that next step is actually going to be the creation of the static web app itself. Now, there's different ways that you can do this. Uh, you can do it using a command line, I'm going to be doing it using a bicep file today. So I actually want to just step outside of this file for just one second. And I want to show you the bicep file, which is going to create our application. So we're going to add a new file on the root, call it main.bicep. And I have what I think is the simplest possible bicep file to create a static web app. We have the name of the static web app, the location, and the SKU that we want to run. This properties object here, you can use to control a lot of things inside of the static web app, but I don't want to go too deep into that today. I want to focus on getting the pipeline working, so I'm just using all default. I am passing in three variables into this bicep pipeline. I'm passing in the location, 
which I am uh, defaulting to the resource group location. I'm passing in the name that I want to give my static web app, and I'm passing in the SKU, but I'm also defaulting that to free. So unless I override it, it will create this on the free tier. Back to the pipeline then, and we need to call this. So after using the AZ group create, we're then going to use the AZ deployment group create. AZ, I am not speaking English today. Um, this is going to run this bicep template inside of this resource group. And you can see we're passing in the parameters for the SWA name. We're not passing in the SKU or location. So it's going to take the location of the resource group and it's just going to create it on the free tier for us. Last but not least, the application that I'm going to be showing you today is a to-do application. And if you are authorized and logged in, it's going to save your to-do list to a Cosmos DB so that you can read it back later and it's not lost every time you hit F5 on your browser. In order to do that, I need some settings inside of my static web app to allow access to that Cosmos DB and set up the database name and the container name. Really easy in the portal, and to be honest, also really easy on the command line. For this, we're using AZ static web app in order to run this command, and we can set our um, app settings using uh, this function. So we need to give it the static web app name, we need to give it the resource group that's going to be running, and then we just need the list of settings that we have. So I've got four settings right now the Cosmos um, endpoint, the connect the key for connecting to it, the name of the container, and the name of the database. And to be honest, that's kind of it. This is all that we need to do in order to actually generate our static web app using the pipeline. So let's make a push here. So add IAC. We're going to push this up to my repo. And then if I can find the right browser window, we should be able to see that if I refresh this now, we get our workflows at the top. And if I go to actions, I get this create and set up SWA infrastructure workflow that we've just created. Now, this is a fun part. If this fails, my demos are going to be really interesting for the rest of the session. So everybody keep your fingers crossed. Let's run the workflow and see what happens. Just check that that actually comes up and doesn't give us a YAML error. I'm on about 50-50 for YAML errors when I do this. I've had so many pull requests setting this talk up that say, language that I'm not going to use on this stream, YAML, as a reason for why I'm pushing yet more code up. I, think, I don't know, is YAML a thing you either hate or love, or is it just a thing that everybody loves to hate? It's one of the two. Stockholm Syndrome. So why, whilst we are running that pipeline, that generally takes a couple of minutes to run. Um, we are going to have a look at how we're going to create or how we're going to deploy our application because once this workflow is complete, we're going to have a static web app available to us, but it's not going to have anything deployed on it. That's going to be our second pipeline. But before I show you the pipeline directly, I want to show you the command lines that we're going to be using to run this. So, number one. Inside a closed code, every time I do the run through for this demo, I forget this step. Inside of my application, I want to put something on the main page that shows you where we are in the flow. So, right underneath my header, I'm just going to add a div saying deployed by CLI. That's going to change the pipeline and it's going to change, hopefully, the pull request before we finish today. Then on our command line, we're going to be using .NET to do all of the building. Remember, in the default pipeline you get out of the box, this is all taken care of for you. We don't have that available to us. So I have some tests. So let's run our tests and make sure that nothing's broken. I only have tests in my API right now. I should really have tests everywhere, but you know, it's enough to get the idea. So I have two tests, and they both passed. Woohoo! Once I've done that, I can start to deploy my application. But Actually, there's one more change I need to make before I can do that. I said that that default out-of-the-box 
action that we're using does lots of things. One of the things it actually does is change the code that you upload to your static web app. See, a static web app can work with lots of different technology for the API settings. When you are building it using the standard or the out of the box action, it actually checks what language you're using and it sets up the Azure function that runs inside of your static web app to be using that same technology. If we're building this ourselves and pushing this ourselves and just uploading the files, the static web app doesn't actually know what it's supposed to be deploying. So we need to tell it. Now, in order to do that, let me just bring this page in here. Ignore the fact that this is in Dutch. I apologize for that. It doesn't matter how many times I tell Microsoft I want to see Microsoft.com in English. It always takes my location and overrides the language for me. But what I want to show you, you can actually see without being able to speak Dutch. And that is this list of runtimes that are available inside of an Azure static web app. So we can run .NET 6, .NET 6 isolated, .NET 7 isolated. That's what we're using today. Uh, Node 14, 16, 18, Python 3.8, Python 3.9. But we need to let the static web app know which one of those we're running so it can provision the correct hardware or the correct infrastructure. And we do that by putting this .NET 7 isolated inside of a configuration file in our client application. So let's do that now. It means going back into code. And we need to go to our www root folder, which just gets um, published and copied to your static web app as is. And at the top of this file, we're going to tell it what platform it should be using. So we're going to put the platform object in there. And like I say, the API runtime we have, .NET isolated 7.0. Once we have this in place, now we can start to actually do um, all of the things we need to do to get the published code available to us. So first up, we're going to publish a client. Uh, this is going to take just a couple of seconds because it has to um, optimize the WASM files, et cetera, et cetera. Generally, it takes like 10, 15 seconds. It knows I'm in a live demo, so maybe the computer's going to be nasty to me. No, there we go. That's too bad. And then we're going to do the same for the Azure function. Yes, 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 yes. Next step, we can push it up to the static web app. And in order to do that, we need to use the Azure static web app CLI. Now, this started out as a Node.js server, which before it went into general availability, made it so easy to be able to develop static web apps locally. Before it came about, you had to put all sorts of boilerplate in your code. So your application knew if you're running locally, then it would go to one URL for your API. If you're running in Azure, it would go to another. Once this CLI was available, or that was a thing of the past, it creates, it pretends to be an Azure static web app running locally and sorts all of that glue out for us. So we run it the same here as we do inside of Azure. Once it went to general availability, way more functionality associated with it. One of them is deploying the static web app. But before we do that deploy, I do just want to show you this app working locally so you can see what it is that we're going to um, push up. So we have this SWA start, and that is going to take the files from my dist client folder, my published files that I'm about to push up to production. And it's going to give us a local version of the application. There's my deployed by CLI, which isn't strictly speaking true because it's only running locally right now. And this is what we should get to uh, Azure. So show SWA CLI. We can save that and we can say, yes, I've now shown the SWA CLI. We have a to do that's finished. So let's kill this. And then we're going to use the second step that I was talking about, and that is the deploy. Now, before we run the deploy, shall we check whether or not we actually have infrastructure to deploy it to? Look at that. We have created and set up our SWA infrastructure without using the portal. Let's check it's available. And we should have, if we refresh this screen, an ent demo resource group with an ent demo SWA. 
and we have a red coast URL. I adore the names that they come up with for these URLs. And we have that US, your static web app is live and waiting for your content. So we had the first step for infrastructure as code. We can create our static web app on the fly each and every time we need to without going through the portal. So to deploy to it, there's a few things that we need to do. We need to know, or we need to get permissions to deploy to uh, the static web app. Inside of the flow, I showed you that it's got that secret that gets added by the portal. We don't have that available because we don't know um, what the static web app is before we start. It's just created by that infrastructure as code. But with the um, AZ static web app command line, we can actually extract that. Uh, is that readable at the bottom of the screen? Yes. Okay. So we're calling this secrets list and we are looking for the properties API key. Uh, if you use this, remember to add the minus OTSV at the end, otherwise you get really interesting format uh, in your variable. We're gonna run that and hopefully that's gonna come back in not too long and give us a token that we can use. And then we can just use that token in our deploy. So SWA deploy, the API location, where are we getting our API files from, the distributed files, those published files, remember. Uh, the same for the client, that's going from the client www root folder. We're using that SWA deploy token that we had previously, um, and that should allow us to get access to the right resource and upload it. And I actually think that my notes are wrong here because I don't think I need these last two the deploy token should be enough. That goes up to uh, Azure, finds out where we need to go to, and as you can see, it starts to upload it. Now this generally takes about 30 seconds or so, so fingers crossed that that comes up soon. Um, but while we're waiting for that, let's have a look at how we can do this inside of a pipeline and get it running automatically. So we're gonna go back to our um, infrastructure as code, and we're going to create a new pipeline because I don't want to put this one inside the infrastructure as code. This is a separate pipeline that does a different thing. So we're going to call that build and deploy app.yaml, and then we're just going to give it the same trigger that we saw in the default pipeline. We have a push to main, and we have pull requests, which are open, synchronized, reopened, or closed to our main branch. One other change which you may have noticed there, I don't want this to run if I'm making a change to my infrastructure, so I am ignoring that specific path. Um, when you redeploy to your infrastructure, you don't need to redeploy your code, so it's pointless running this pipeline at that point. So we still need a couple of environment variables here because we need to know the resource group and the name of the SWA itself. Like I say, hopefully in a couple of months, um, this is going to disappear and I'm going to be using our repo variables in order to run this. And then we have jobs. Now, eventually we're going to have two jobs in this uh, flow, three jobs in this flow. Right now, we're just going to start with one. Build and test, and I'm going to abuse it a little bit in the beginning to actually do the deploy as well. So I don't want these submodules here either, so we'll take away those. So when we have a push to main, or when we have a pull request, which is anything but closed, we want to build and deploy our application. We want to get uh, our code from our repo, so that's the first step. Second step is we want to set up .NET, and I'm running .NET 7 here. Um, I don't want pre-release in this because this is just all production-ready code. Um, and once we've done this, then we can use those three command lines that you saw me using, the .NET test, the .NET publish, uh, in order to get our application out. So let's add those. So we're going to test our app, and if all the tests pass, we can go woohoo, and then we can publish it. Pus blah. Publish the client, publish the API, uh, and we have our code ready for deployment. So the actual deployment, we've got to do a couple of different steps. First one is we need to get hold of that token. And we're gonna do that in exactly the same way that we did it on our command line. We are gonna log into Azure using those Azure credentials that we used in the IAC pipeline. 
And then we're going to call this static web app secrets list and get that into an uh, a variable that we can use in different steps. Then we have to do something slightly different to what we do in the pipeline, and that is we need to add this mask. This is a really important step. If you don't add this mask to your secret, then you are going to display information in the logs that you really don't want to be displaying. So this is an important security step, making sure that we mask this secret so it doesn't appear. Once we mask the secret, then we use this um, SWA secrets output, uh, or the GitHub output to get the SWA secrets available inside of another step. Interesting one here that uh, I found when I was running through this and trying to get my demo code working. If you output these secret, or if you output this uh, variable, you can also use it as a job output and you can use it in different jobs. If you add the mask to the secret, that no longer works. So this step has to be inside of each job that you want this secret to be available in. And now we've got the secret, we can actually deploy uh, our application. And we're gonna do that using the SWA CLI, the same as we did on the command line. So first up, we're gonna install Node. And then once we have Node available, we're going to install the static web app CLI. And then we're gonna call exactly the same function that we were using uh, locally. We have the SWA deploy passing our client WW root, um, our API that we published, that deployment token that we got from the previous step, and something that I forgot to mention when public running it from my uh, command line, this environment variable for production. That's right, we are hard coding it to production right now. I said that that default action will create your staging environments. We're gonna be doing that in just a few minutes, uh, but this first run that we're gonna be giving it, it's only gonna to run to production. And this is the first step in our um, pipeline. So let's push these changes up to GitHub. And deploy workflow, and you can see I've done a typo there. This is why I work with snippets. Commit and sync, push that up. Um, and then we'll check that that's running before we go back to our command line. So if we go to our actions, hopefully, hey, look, we have one and it's queued. Hopefully that's going to start off soon. In progress. Let's see if that one works for us. That's our command line. And we can see that the deployment succeeded. We can see where it uh, deployed to. Oddly enough, I must have done something odd when, oh, I didn't deploy this to production. I accidentally deployed this to a staging slot. So uh, this is kind of a spoiler for later on in the talk. We have a preview slot available that we can see our code. If we open this up, here's our application deployed by CLI. We're still running on this red coast, but you can see that I have this preview flag in here. Oops. You get the idea at least. Uh, that pipeline's still running, that pipeline's still running. That's going to take like two, three minutes to run. So while that's running, let's have a look at how we can get these staging environments inside of our pipeline. Now, you just saw, if I forgot to put the environment flag on the end of a deploy, out of the box, it goes to this preview location. But if I'm running multiple pull requests, I don't want it all to deploy to the same preview location. That's going to really annoy two people if they're maybe got pull requests running at the same time. So we need some way of getting this out there um, and specifying exactly what preview location it's going to go to. So let's go back to our pipeline. Now, if I'm deploying something, I want to be able to redeploy, uh, rerun that deployment step. Say I. Deploy my application, it's all working beautifully. Then I add a change. Something in that change doesn't quite work as I expect it to, and I run a rollback. I want to be able to rerun my deployment step of the last good release to get the application back to a working state. So this is a point where we're gonna split this workflow up into two steps. And in order to do that, we need to get the code available after it's been built. 
for the next job. So we're going to add this upload published files step, which does exactly what it says on the tin. And then we're going to create a second job. We're going to put that above the whole deployment because that needs to be in this second job. So deploy to SWA, again, reasonably descriptive. Um, it's still going to run on the push and on the GitHub action event closed. And it's only going to run if build and test succeeds because we need that output from the previous step. Uh, you can also see the first step that we have in this action is indeed to download um, the published files from the previous step. Once you have that, this will now work as is to deploy to the production environment, but to deploy to a staging environment, we need to do a couple of different things. One, we need to know whether or not we are deploying to a staging environment. So before we do the deploy, we're going to bring down a step here that just says, hey, if the event name that's running, that's kicked off this workflow is push, then I know I'm deploying to production because that's my push to main. If it's not a push, then obviously I'm in a pull request. And so I want to give the environment a name of staging and then the event number, which will be the um, PR number that you're currently um, trying to get into the main branch. We're putting both of those into this environment variable on the GitHub output. So this allows us to use this again in a next step. And that next step is going to be this deploy step. So let's overwrite that. And you can see that at the end, we have this environment, steps.swaenv.output.environment. Now, when we run this, if we run it inside of a pull request, we'll get a staging environment. If we run it on the main, it will go to production. But that default action also does something else which is really cool, and that is it updates the pull request. Not only does it create the staging environment, it lets you know in your pull request where you can test your pull request, rather than having to go through the logs of the deployment to find out where it is. And I want to recreate that inside of my pipeline. So in order to do this, what we can do is run a command line that says, get me my environment list. And you can see here, I have two environments for my static web app that I just created. We have the um, production, Red Coast, blah, uh, blah, blah, and we have Red Coast Preview Rest Europe 2. The fact that it contains the name of the environment um, helps us figure out which host name we need to use. So inside of our pipeline, we can run a step that does this for us. Again, we need to do this uh, after we've deployed, so we have that new staging environment. We are going to be querying the output of that command line that I just showed you to make sure that the host name contains the environment variable that we used for the deploy. And we are making that available in um, an SWA host name environment variable that we can use between steps. I'm also echoing this to the uh, log file just so that I can see it easily if I want to take a look at the log file. Last step here. We have an update pull request step that's using the GitHub script, and that uses markdown format to add a comment to my pull request. So I'm adding a header of staging environment updated. I've got a test here pointing to the host name that we've just extracted from the command line. Uh, and I'm also saying who caused this redeploy to happen, so the actor inside of GitHub. Then we use a GitHub REST um, command line to create this comment. This confused me in the beginning because uh, it's saying, on an issue, create a comment. It's like, I'm not on an issue. I'm on a pull request, but it will talk to the pull request as well. And this will run our staging environment for us. So that's how we create our staging environments, but we still need to do our cleanup. So we have one last job to add to our pipeline before we go forward. And that one last job is going to be our cleanup job. So if we're on a pull request and that pull request is being closed, then we're going to run the AZ static web app environment delete to make sure that we can delete the staging and then pull request number um, that we're running. You may notice I am deploying 
using the um, SWA CLI and I'm deleting using the AZ static web app script because, well, AZ static web app doesn't do deployments at the moment and the SWA CLI doesn't do cleanup at the moment. So we kind of need to mix and match the two of them. I hope at some point they kind of reach parity and you can just pick one tool. We'll see. So now we've got this, we can push it up, but this is for a pull request. So I want to actually see this working as a pull request. So I'm not going to push the main. I'm going to create a branch for this. And I am going to commit my new pipeline for the branch. And I'm also going to change this to not deployed by CLI, but to deployed by PR. When I push this up to production, I forgot to say deployed by pipeline. Never mind. So let's check this in. Add staging um, step. We're going to push that up. We need to push the branch. And then let's see what we can do inside of GitHub with it. Okay, now the deploy pipeline that at least ran successfully. Yay. Let's reset this. And now we have our CLI up and running as we expect it to be in production, again, all via the pipeline. So not doing anything inside of the portal. If we go and have a look at pull requests, we can see that add staging's had recent push uh, pushes. So let's add that to our pull request. Let's create a pull request here. This should hopefully in a second fire off that pipeline again. There we go. And that should now create that staging environment. So while that's running, there's one last thing that I want to show you today. And that is the custom domains that I was talking about. You see, whilst it is cool that you get this URL out of the box, it makes it easier to name your static web apps, say, compared to, say, uh, an app service plan or web app where you have to have a globally unique name for it because it's part of the URL. That's great because you know what the URL is, but it's not great because you have to have interesting naming conventions to stop collisions happening. This one is really easy for the naming convention, but yeah, the URL is not necessarily fantastic. So we are going to push up a um, a custom domain here and get that again out of the infrastructure as code and make sure that it works. So again, back to our infrastructure um, as code pipeline. And once our app is deployed, we're going to add some extra steps to make this work. Number one, we need to give it another environment variable, and that is what domain do we want to run to? Now, the domain I want to run to today Day is um, the show community day, so we'll just go for ACD, and then we can use that uh, in the pipeline. First step that we need to do, we need to get the host name. We need to know what static web app we are going to be adding a custom domain to, and we're going to be using that same AZ static web app environment list in order to do this. Only now, rather than checking the host name. We're going to be checking the name of the environment, and our production environment is always default. So we're going to be getting that out of it. Next step, well, we kind of need to um, update our DNS so that we can add some information to join up our domain and our static web app. Now, this is going to be different for each provider. So I'm not going to go too in depth with this, uh, but I just have a little app that updates my DNS provider with the uh, variables that I need, and hopefully that's going to make this pipeline work. I'm on about a 75% hit rate for this pipeline working, so um, working first time at least. We'll see what happens today. Last step, we need to add, if I can get my mouse in the right place, we need to set a host name on our static web app, and we need to set that for the domain that we're going to be running at. Now, I'm going to be doing acd.stacy.cloud today. So this is going to try and set a host name. It's then going to go off and try and connect the two things together, make sure that DNS records are correct. 
you can do this on an Apex domain. It's slightly different and I don't have time to show you today, but I'm going to be writing a blog post about that in the um, hopefully not too distant future. So keep me honest with this one if I uh, don't do it in time. Uh, and once we run all of these, hopefully we should get our domain. Now I want to push that up. Uh, custom domain. Commit and push. And then we need to kick off that pipeline uh, again and hope that it finishes in time because so that I'm almost out of time here. So let's hope that this bit at least finishes. I've got 10 minutes left. Ah, this is going to work. Do you like the confidence? Uh, so look, so our ad staging steps is working. Um, I wonder why that's running twice. That's odd. That shouldn't be running twice. I've made a mistake somewhere. But what we do have is uh, this workflow again, and we can run this workflow and get that up and running. Let's check I'm running the right workflow file. I know why it kicked off the second one again. I'm an idiot. I have committed my code change to the, uh, the, uh, the staging environment and not to the production environment. But we can get around this. Let's uh, go back. Woo! Go back to our actions. We can fix this. Uh, cancel this because we don't need this one to run. And instead, what we're going to do is run this, and we should be able to run it again for a staging environment. Aha, we'll cheat. So hopefully, this is going to kick off. Come on, you can do it. You can do it. And hopefully, this one has the right workflow file. I'm really pleased I checked the workflow file. Otherwise, you'd have been a, seen a very confused Stacy trying to figure out why it wasn't doing what it's supposed to be doing. Okay, do we have our deploy done yet? Uh, yep, yeah, we have a deploy finished, so we can see that our staging step is done. If we go to our pull request and have a look, you can see that we have this GitHub Actions bot has added something to our pull request. We can open this. And here is my staging one environment created for us, linked to the pull request. And when I close the pull request, which I'm not going to do yet because I don't want to jinx that other workflow, uh, it will run through and then delete that environment as well. You're not going to get to see that today, but please trust me on this. Um, right, how's our other workflows doing? This is the fun part because now it's a little bit of a waiting game because this can run in like two minutes, and this can run in 10 minutes, and you don't get to see it finish. DNS records are always interesting. You never quite know how long it's going to take to read correctly. Um, so what can we do in the meantime? There's one last thing that I'm not going to go too in depth with because I don't have the time to go really through it. But there's one last thing in this application which is not um, really compatible with the workflow that we have. And that is the way that you get roles assigned to a static web app. Now, if I go into this role management, I can invite users into my application, grant them roles, give them access to everything. Now, I can do that in the pipeline. Uh, where are my notes? But it's kind of uh, a, a little bit interesting. So where are my, I've got command line I want to run. That would be, that would be, that would be, that would be, that would be lost. Wonderful when you get everything really nicely organized and still get lost. But I have this command, az static web app using the az command line again. And I can invite a user. I can uh, say what authentication provider we're using. I can say what role they have. I can say what domain we want to run this against. So, you know what? Let's actually give this one the right domain rather than just leaving it as a to do. So, we want uh, this one. Um, da -da -da -da. Delete this bit. Make sure that I clean this up just a little bit nicely. And this is going to generate me a link. And this is one of the reasons why it's not suitable for 
uh, the workflow that we have right now. Because this link, if I just log in with my Twitter account, it doesn't activate the link. I actually have to come in here and paste this link directly. Now, you don't want to do that to your users every time. And then it's still wrong because apparently I've copied the wrong thing. Trust me, this works. Um, but you don't want to do that every time you run your pipeline against a possible unknown environment. So this isn't really going to work. The other issue with this is it generates a user ID for you. And that is unique for every static web app. So if I accidentally delete my environment and recreate it, all of those user IDs no longer work and my database is full of orphan records. What we need to do instead here is use custom authentication. I'm not going to go through it with you, but um, it's worth taking a look on the MS Learn documentation to have a look. Um, that gets around it because then you have a known user ID and you control the roles that your users have. It's not done inside of the static web app at all. And I can see a horrible red cross. And that's a horrible red cross because it didn't pick up the DNS name. Never mind. I am going to make sure this runs. I'm going to put it on Twitter later and make sure that this environment is available for at least half a day to show you that it does actually work if you uh, kick off the pipeline again. But let's just rerun our failed jobs and we'll put that up later. That, in a very fast whirlwind, is how we can take our static web app, like I say, out of the hobby box and actually use it inside of a pipeline which is recognizable as a real production pipeline and get things working, uh, yeah, as we want to do in production. If you've got any questions, let me know. I'm on Twitter. I'm on Mastodon, um, which you can find from stacy-clouds.net. All of the links to uh, where I'm available online are for that. Might happily answer any questions. And uh, yeah, that's me done. Thank, Thank you, you for joining me. Thank you so much. Well done. That was a really, really nice talk. Um, hopefully getting people out of the, hey, look, this is my first blog of my cat yes. uh, stage. Um, it's actually quite versatile. Um, it, it fits way better in, um, I don't know if it's enterprisey, but more professional yeah. software scenarios um and it's good to see that i asked on the chat are you now ready to use swa in production and the answer was no okay so <laughs> maybe it should be in the next book yeah um but there's a lot of things i i think that that people because this is of course a, a very compressed overview of, yeah and and you're like you're the, the the queen of demos like you know juggling everything around quite fast so where would people normally start when they, when they want to take the slow pace? I would say if you want to take the slow pace, then just start by playing with it on the command line. So that AZ static web app and the SWA CLI, using both of those, you can get comfortable with what happens when you run the different commands here. Um, see what happens, see how you need to use them. Um, really, if you are, if you are just getting started, then create it in the portal, get that default pipeline, and there's enough documentation, I'll put a link to that on Twitter as well, uh, on how you can actually customize the default pipeline to still allow you to build your own application, to test your application, and use your files to upload. I've already got a blog post on that. I will link to that blog post. Yeah, um, shameless plug. Shameless plug. Using that um, default pipeline and just like, like you say, that first step, one step at a time, um, the reason why I do it this way in this demo is just because it is very versatile. It is very awesome little GitHub action. And it's not a little GitHub action. It's a huge GitHub action. But it's also still really opaque. Even if you are using it with your own code, there are things going on in there that um, I think you'd rather have more control over in a professional uh, workflow. Um, you don't need it to do all of the guessing of what it needs to do. You want to tell it, do this, do this, do this, do this. But changing it in the first instance, it's how my blog is actually published. Uh, it uses that first step edited pipeline uh, so that I have control over how my app's built, but I still trust that action to do the deploy. Yeah, but that, that's also where, like normally, when you, when you are in a real life scenario, that's where the magic happens. That's where, where you do all the checks. That's where you integrate. That's where you, yeah. in the end, it all comes together. Yeah. So learning that as a basic 
basic next step. Yeah, that, 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 that is a wonderful place to start, absolutely. It's, um, and if you see how you can use that action, that actually gives you quite a nice insight into what is going on behind the scenes in the static web app because you have to do the control over your application at least a little bit uh, without going full-fledged getting security keys and everything else yourself but still getting me oh right, okay so it deploys a function for me but it actually does have to know what function it's deploying it's not just magic that goes on in the background mm -hmm. it is told what to do and you learn let's say step by step deeper and deeper so it's not if I would rephrase it, it's not a magic black box. It's a moving box, and you just open it up, and you get yeah. more insights in what, what's actually happening. Yeah, um, that's a nice way to put it. Yeah, cool. So that would be the next step. Dive into the CLI. It's not scary. No. Oh, it did, didn't look scary or it, intimidating. It's really not that scary at all. It's, um, I think anybody who is... Um, experienced with bash or powershell that they're, they're going to find it so easy uh, anybody who is still getting into that there's a couple of bits you have to do but it, it, it's a nice one to get into it's not too scary great well it's not scary folks and um well you're you're going to share all the links and yep. you're just one message away uh, you're always quite responsive yeah on the DMs socials are open if you don't want to put yeah. it live on twitter what it is so uh yeah cool it's quite happy to help well, Hank, who's doing the production, was already like waving, <laughs> like, hey, you should stop chatting. So I take that as a hint. Yes. Um, I want to thank you for, for being here today and sharing no your knowledge. Um, hopefully the next book will be about uh, the enterprise situations yes. with uh, SWA, <laughs> but no pressure. No pressure. No, no pressure. pressure at all. And enjoy your current, your current book. Um, thank you so much for being here. And uh, yeah, I hope to see you around at one of the many, many 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 conferences hopefully hopefully thank you for having me thank you so much thank you everybody for joining yeah keep watching we are having more uh, talks um, uh, coming up uh, also the folks in denmark started their broadcast so if you look at the website there's now two uh, live streams uh, happening um, so you are now able to switch between the talks but i would recommend you to stay here because we have an awesome talk by Bartlenuik coming up.